Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation that uses floor value. All right. So if you want, pause the video and try this problem first. Okay, let's get started. Now, what am I going to do? I have an equation uh, with the floor function. Uh, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and call this n. And let's not forget that n is an integer. Okay, that's important. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens. Uh, so I'm going to try to isolate this floor of x over 2 here. That's going to give me 7 minus n minus x, right? Awesome. Now, we, we have a conclusion here. Since we assume that the floor value of x is equal to n, this means that x is between n and n plus 1. Half close interval, right? Because n is an integer and x needs to be in that interval. Cool. Now, this also has a meaning, obviously, right? So we can safely say that x over 2 needs to be, according to this equation, needs to be between 7 minus n minus x and 8 minus n minus x. So one more than that, right? Okay, cool. Now, what does this give us? Let's go ahead and multiply everything by 2. That should give me 14 minus 2n minus 2x less than or equal to x, and that's less than 16 minus 2n minus 2x. Again, I'm multiplying everything by 2, right? Okay, cool. So this, this is fine. I got an inequality for x, like an interval, but I have x's on everything. So let's go ahead and put all the x's together. Uh, let's add 2x to both sides. I mean, for, to everything. There are three sides, I guess, right? Add 2x to everything, and then you should be getting something like this, which is much better than the previous one. Now, we've got to think about it, this carefully, and I can go ahead and divide uh, both sides by 3 because my goal is to always get an x in the middle or somewhere, right? So now I have an interval for x, but not only I have one interval for x, I have actually two intervals for x. Why? Because at the beginning, remember, we assumed that the floor value of x is equal to n. That gave us another inequality. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put these two inequalities together and then uh, find the value of x here or uh, find the value of n, I should say, first, right? Okay, so interestingly, I don't know why, but uh, we're kind of getting, this is from Google Docs, so we're kind of getting a different page like black and white, black and white, I guess. I don't know why that's happening, but anyways, let's continue. So how do I put these together? So here's what, what I'm thinking. Here, x is greater than or equal to something. Here, x is less than something. So this value here should definitely be, what? Since x is greater than that, that's a lower bound. And this is an upper bound. And a lower bound should definitely be less than an upper bound. So I can safely say that n is less than 16 minus 2n over 3. And, because both of these have to happen, right? And... I can say that the lower bound here, which is 14 minus 2n over 3, needs to be less than the upper bound here, which is n plus 1. So these two inequalities have to happen at the same time, simultaneously, right? And don't forget that n is an integer. So let's proceed. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and then add the 2n, right? Awesome. And then divide by 5. Okay, cool. So this gives me that, and on the other side, I can multiply by 3, 3n three plus 3. Then what I can do is I can actually go ahead and add 2n and subtract. So this is what I'm going to be getting from here. 5n is greater than 11, and n is greater than 11 over 5. Okay, cool. Now, at this point, you're thinking, I have an and, so that's an intersection. This means n needs to be between... 11 over 5 and 16 over 5. Correct? Okay, awesome. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to put these together where, where I already did, right? So this is my conclusion. But don't forget, n is an integer, right? Since n is an integer, what are we supposed to have? We're supposed to have a, a single value here. Okay, 11.11 11 fits is 2.2, 16 fits is 3.2. So between those two values, we only have one integer. So n needs to equal 3. Awesome. 
But that's not the end of the story. Why? Because, because we need to find x. But at least we were able to find a particular value for n. So this is how the floor value equations usually go. Uh, we find the value of n, and then from there, we're going to try to find the value of x, which could end up being an inequality, right? Okay, so what we're going to do next is basically the following. We're going to go ahead, take this n value, which is n equals 3, and we're going to plug those in here and in here. Let's see what we're going to get from there. Okay, the first one is going to give me x between 3 and 4. So this means x is between 3 and 4, but, you know, only 3 is inclusive. And... And we have another one, right? And the second one gives me what? Okay. The second one gives me this. So both of them have to happen, right? We know that both have to happen. So from here, I can get x between 14 minus 2n, right? So it's going to look like this. Uh, 14 minus 2n over 3. So it's going to be 14 minus 2n over 3. And for that... Uh, I'll use n equals 3, so that will be 14 minus 6, which is 8 thirds. And then on the other side, I would have 16 minus 2n over 3. 16 minus 2n over 3. And for n equals 3, that would be 10 thirds, right? So this is my conclusion. x needs to be between 3 and 4 and 8 thirds and 10 thirds. But what is that supposed to mean? Well, here's one fact. You can go ahead and find the intersection of these two, right? And that would mean that x is between, uh, since this is about, what, 2.6-ish, right? So this means x needs to be between 3 and 10 thirds because 4 is obviously greater than 10 thirds. So we need to have this. So this is my conclusion. But is that the solution? No. Because if you go back to the original stat, this is an integer, right? This is an integer. And this is an integer. What is that supposed to mean? X needs to be an integer as well. Well, it wasn't stated, but you have to understand that from the problem that X must be an integer. What's our conclusion then? Knowing that X is an integer here, we conclude that X needs to equal 3. So our solution is X equals 3. And that's the end of our story. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be a geometry puzzle. And guess what? That's going to be an awesome puzzle. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.